In this video, I'm going to go through how to find the inverse function of a quadratic expression. And again, these questions are uh, have become very popular over the last few years. And um, though they may seem daunting, um, the method is actually very straightforward um, because you complete the square, which is, it is a skill that you should know um, in any case. Now, the quadratic could be like this, or it could be um, as simple as something like that. But nonetheless, it's a quadratic. It will have an x squared. So it says the function g is defined as 5 plus 6x minus x squared with the domain x is bigger than or equal to 3. Um, that information is important. Express the inverse function. Now, usually when you are doing inverse function, you put the equation y equals, um, so you turn it from function notation, you write it as an equation in terms of y. And the first thing you do is you swap the x's and the y's together. Now, what I would advise is that you don't do that. My advice is the first thing you do, you complete the square. You don't confuse yourself with changing um, x's and y's or, or putting it as an equation. So to complete the square, I would rearrange the quadratic and I would put um, the negative x squared first. So negative x squared, I would put the x term in the middle and then the constant term on its own. Now you can see that this isn't a 1 x squared, it's a negative 1 x squared and any coefficient of x squared that is bigger than 1 or even less than 1, we cannot complete the square unless we get rid of it. So I'm dividing everything effectively, I'm factorizing the negative 1 out and I'm dividing everything by negative 1. So here it is, negative 1 is out. I now have, um, you can put negative 1 if you want, or you can just put a minus. So x squared minus 6x minus 5. Now I can complete the square. So I divide this by 2. So I've got x minus 3 squared minus... 3 squared, so it's always, always, always a minus, and that digit here um, you square, and then the minus 5 I include here. So this is minus x minus 3 squared, this becomes minus 9 minus 5, which is minus 14, and then I'm going to multiply the negative 1 in to both parts. Um, nothing inside the bracket changes because you're not multiplying the negative 1 by the bracket because there are actually two brackets. It's x minus 3 squared. So it simply will be negative x still minus 3 squared, but then minus 1 times negative 14 becomes a plus 14. This is where I would add the y equals 14 minus x minus 3 squared. And at this point, I will swap x and y together. So step one, complete the square, which we've done. Now put it as an equation equal to y, swap x's and y's together. So y becomes x, 14 minus the x becomes a y. Now I need to rearrange to make y the subject again. And I'm going to rearrange by moving this over there because I want it to be positive. It makes life easier. Um, and I'm also going to subtract x and move it to the other side. So I've now got y minus 3 squared, a positive y minus 3 squared, equals a 14 minus x. I want to get rid of the square, so I'm going to square root. So y minus 3 equals plus or minus 14 minus x. Then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So y equals 3 plus or minus root 14 minus x. Now, this is now my inverse function. However, there are two answers and I can only have one. 
So I go back to the top of the question and it tells me x is bigger than or equal to 3. Well, if I want this, okay, if I want this to be bigger than 3, my answer is not going to be 3 minus anything. It has to be 3 plus the square root of 14 um, minus x. So you have to choose an answer. You cannot leave it as plus or minus. So it's 3 plus root 14 minus x. Um, and this is basically how these type of questions um, go. Um, you complete the square, you put it as an equation um, with y as the subject, you swap x and y around, you rearrange it to make y the subject again. Now I'm going to answer part b as well. It says state the domain. Um, usually when we did work on the domain, um, we focused on um, values excluded from the domain of the main function. And it's basically the same principles here. Um, the function has a square root and uh, the values therefore that must be excluded from the square root are any values uh, that are um, smaller than or equal um, to zero. So we cannot have negative numbers inside the square root. Therefore, 14 minus x must be bigger than or equal to zero. Um, and I solve that, so I now have 14 is bigger than or equal to x. I can rewrite it as x has to be smaller than or equal to 14. So the domain um, has to be um, the values excluded are all the values where x is smaller than Sorry, the values included are values where x is smaller than or equal to 14 because that would make the domain work. So we don't want the values that are excluded. If we wanted the values that are excluded, it would be x is bigger than or equal to 14, but we want to state the domain rather than the values that are excluded. So x has to be smaller than or equal to 14.